One of the questions I see most often is what is the difference between DynaMesh and ZeroMesher and when should I be using one over the other? George, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Hey everyone, I'm Eric, and today we're gonna look at DynaMesh and ZeroMesher. Now we've covered ZeroMesher extensively in another video before, and so really what I wanna show you is what I'm lovingly calling the DynaMesh ZeroMesher Wombo Combo. Oh, it's really when they come together like Voltron. Ready to form Voltron. Activate interlock. Dynatherms connected. To become a very, very important and a very, very powerful part of your toolkit when sculpting. Now, both of them have their time and place. And so we're going to quickly go over what Dynamesh is, how to use it. We'll do a very quick zero mesher refresher, and then we'll look at how to use them in conjunction with one another to speed up your workflow. Let's go. Let's go. All right, so we're just gonna start with a sphere to get started. So we're just gonna make PolyMesh 3D on our sphere to turn that into an edible piece of geometry. And the first thing we need to look at is DynaMesh. So if we go down to geometry and go to DynaMesh here, we can just hit this button and turn it on. And you can see as soon as we turn on DynaMesh, it completely changes the topology of the mesh. And really what DynaMesh is, is it's turning your mesh into a voxel based mesh of sorts where you can add geometry as you need it very quickly. Whereas a normal mesh, if you're dragging out an area or you're trying to edit something like say you have a face and you're dragging a horn out, as you drag that horn further and further out, you're going to lose topology and you're gonna to have less polygons to work with. Now you could subdivide it, but that's only gonna get you so far. And so DynaMesh allows you to quickly redistribute polygons evenly across the entire mesh whenever you want. Just to back it up a little bit, in my own workflow, I tend to use DynaMesh as a concepting tool. So in the concepting phase, when I'm blocking stuff out, I'm working really rough, I'll use DynaMesh because it allows you to do a lot of different things. You can merge meshes together, you can redistribute your polygons as needed, and then when I'm ready to actually start polishing and finalizing my sculpt into something that I'm gonna use for production, I'll zero mesh it, which will give me cleaner topology that I can then sculpt on to really make sure the surface is smooth and there's not a lot of bumps. And as we get further, you'll see that with DynaMesh, you can get pretty clean surfaces even in DynaMesh. But if you know anything about topology, you don't want to fight your mesh when you're trying to sculpt something smooth, right? So if you're trying to sculpt a line, and the topology is going the other direction, you're gonna need more and more topology to get that line clean and straight. Whereas if you have a polygon flow that's leading in the same direction, you're trying to draw your lines, you're gonna be able to do that a lot easier with less topology. So we'll take a look at that. Why don't we go ahead and we're gonna turn on symmetry and we're just gonna do some very basic sculpting. Now the typical workflow would be to subdivide, sculpt more, subdivide, sculpt more. And that's a very important part of the process, but right now we're just trying to block stuff out, work rough and loose, and we don't want to get too married to our surfaces or our details. And so DynaMesh is going to allow us to still have the topology we need without worrying about the smaller details. So let's go ahead and undo back a little bit before we subdivided. And now what we're going to do is we're going to turn on DynaMesh. And you can see it's completely changed the topology. And to go back to our example earlier, if we want to give this guy horns, so let's go ahead and pull out horns. If I control drag in space, it immediately gives me resolution along those horns. And now we can continue sculpting. And if at any time I want to re dynamesh, I can just control drag again and it redistributes those polygons again. So, a very intuitive way to work. Now, you know, we can go ahead and add an add a nose there's our nose and then we can just drag and now we've got topology we can continue so instead of worrying about subdividing and going up and down our subdivision chain we can just work rough and quick and not worry about anything else now let's quickly go through the features of DynaMesh so the first option we have is group so let's quickly just mask the bottom half of our mesh we're going to hit ctrl w to create a poly group now let's control drag and space 
And you can see what it actually did is it separated the two polygroups into their own meshes. So kind of a way to split stuff up as you're working with DynaMesh if you need to. The next one we have is Polish. I'm going to turn off wireframe, turn on Polish, and that's just going to smooth the mesh out as you're DynaMeshing, which is kind of neat, right? So you work really rough for a little bit and then you're like, oh, I need more topology and I'm ready to kind of further my forms a bit more. Hit that Polish button, smooth it out. It's pretty cool. And we have Blur, which that just adjusts the amount and strength the polish is going to affect the mesh. So if we turn it way up, a lot of polish. If we turn it way down, not a lot of polish. And you can see that Blur has one of those little circles. So with the circle on, the polish will try to grab creases and edges and chisel those. Whereas if we turn the circle off, it's going to just smooth everything out evenly. Project will just attempt to project the detail before you DynaMesh onto the new model. So if we try to add some rough detail here and then turn Project on and DynaMesh, let's turn Polish off. It's going to attempt to project that detail the best it can, whereas when it's off and we do it, you can see it's not going to be as concerned about capturing that detail. The next thing we have and probably the most important part of DynaMesh is resolution. The resolution determines the density of the polygons the DynaMesh creates. So let's turn the resolution way down and do this. You can see we now have fewer polygons. If we crank it way up, we have a lot more. Basically with the resolution, you want to find the middle ground where you're getting enough for the stage of sculpt that you're at, but you're not going so high that it's difficult to work with the mesh. There's also this little picker option. I guess you can choose an area to define your resolution. I've never honestly used that to be honest, but maybe I should. It seems pretty cool. Next, we have sub projection. This is really just a way to control how much topology is spent on the edges of a model. Now, this model won't be a good example, so let's go ahead and go over to a cube quick. Make polymesh 3D. Go down to DynaMesh. Now, with the sub projection, it correlates to the project feature we looked at earlier. And project actually has to be enabled for sub projection to work. And basically it determines how much topology it will attempt to place on the edges or creases of the mesh versus the rest of it. So we need something with hard edges like a cube to showcase this. If we turn it way down in DynaMesh, you can see the edges are pretty light. Whereas if we crank it way up in DynaMesh, we're getting a lot more topology along those edges, really trying to retain the shape. The next three features are sort of Boolean features, but they're for DynaMesh. And so to demonstrate this, all we need to do is go back up to the subtool palette and let's go ahead and insert a couple shapes. So I'm going to insert a couple spheres. We'll duplicate that. And something you may or may not be familiar with in the layers tab are these little buttons right here. And these basically determine the kind of union the mesh is going to make if an operation like a DynaMesh or a Boolean is done to it. So if we take our sphere and we move it, say right here, and I choose this option, which is subtract, and then I merge down and DynaMesh, you can see it actually subtracted that sphere from my object. So pretty cool. And then just to show you the other ones, if we do another sphere, we move this one to this side and we set it to this option. This is called Union Subtract. If we choose this option, this will basically be the center of the Venn diagram of the two. So if we go ahead and hit and, you see it kind of created what's left over from those two meshes. And the last option we have is a shell. So you can actually create thickness to your DynaMesh if we just hit that. Give it a second to think. It actually kind of created an interior to the, to the cube. What is this? Rectangle? To the cube. So pretty cool stuff. Now you can start to see how powerful DynaMesh is for blocking stuff out. So, so if we go back to our original sphere and say we want to give this guy a neck, we can actually go ahead, mask an area. And there's two ways we could go about this. So we could obviously just invert our mask, pull down. And now when we do that, you can see how bad our topology is. So we can just DynaMesh. And now we have even topology on that neck. And then the other way we could do it, for example, is we could insert a cylinder. Make sure both our meshes are on. And then we could place that cylinder however we want. And we could keep them separate for a while. And then when we're ready to merge them together, 
I could do a merge down and then dynamesh these together and now they're one piece of geometry that we can sculpt on. Where it gets kind of murky is that at this stage you can use Z Remesher or Dynamesh. We could easily just Z Remesh this and continue working and go from there. But say we're concepting and we're not quite sure what we want to do with this guy yet. Like, am I going to give him ears? Am I going to give him a mouth? Instead of having to keep Z Remeshing, we can just very quickly do these rough Dynameshes and stay in this kind of rough clay concepting phase and not feel too attached to anything. And once we feel like we have our design figured out, then we can worry about Z-Remeshing it and making a, cr a cleaner monster. To reinforce Dynamesh, here's a Hanzo that I have, and this Hanzo has fairly clean geometry, but I've decided that I want to go ahead and add a chest to him. In that case, I would add a cube, put it in position, block it out, and then begin sculpting his chest. Once I was happy and ready to merge them together to further refine the mesh, I would then merge them together and Dynamesh them if I need to, I could mask just the head off and reproject the details, or we can save that for the end, but we're basically at a stage now where I can continue sculpting and adding on. And I would basically do this for all the body parts. So I would probably do the chest and the arms, and then I would merge those to the head. And then I would do the legs too, unless he was going to wear pants or something, then I probably wouldn't worry about it. But you have a lot of options on how you want to build and construct your mesh, and you can do those in phases if that works better for you. Once everything is merged together and you're really ready to start refining, that's when you can move on to the Z remesher phase, Z remesh the whole thing, and then start sculpting your forms very cleanly and as you would if you were going to turn this into an actual production model. So to summarize, we use Dynamesh for rough concepting, merging objects together, and keeping ourselves from getting too married to the details of our mesh. Right, we just want to focus on the silhouette, the shape, the concept, the idea. And we're using Dynamesh for that because it's quick and it's easy and we don't have to worry about it too much. And then when we're ready to start finalizing our model and making it nice and pretty and make the surfaces clean and smooth, then we start using Z Remesher. This isn't the only way to work. If you just want to use Z Remesher, you can just use Z Remesher and maybe only use Dynamesh when you need to merge ob objects together. So, you know, any way that you like to work. But I like that Dynamesh keeps me from getting too committed to anything. I think that's very powerful and I think that's a really good thing as an artist because it's so easy to just start subdividing and getting lost in the sauce and getting way too focused on the details and then kind of losing sight of the overall shape and feeling of the model. So pretty cool stuff. Now, just as a reminder about Z Remesher, Zero Mesher is going to attempt to give us clean topology that reinforces the shape and planes of our mesh. So if you want to learn in depth about every setting with Z Remesher, you can go to my Z Remesher Explained video and I'll link that up here. And that's going to give you a full breakdown of Z Remesher. If we, for example, took this Hanzo model, went up to the highest subdivision level, Dynameshed him. So here is a Dynameshed version of Hanzo. And then we're like, OK, we're ready to Z Remesh him. We can go down to Z Remesher, hit Z Remesher, give it a second to think, and then Z Remesher is going to attempt to give us topology that matches our edge flow. Now you can always use the Z Remesher brush right here, Z Remesher guides, and you can coax it along a little bit by just drawing guides with curves. And those curves are just going to attempt to give it a better understanding of how it should flow the topology of the model. And you can see that looks much better. And then, so we don't lose all of the work that we spent in Dynamesh. What we can do is just subdivide a few times. That's probably good, maybe even a little too high. And then we can go ahead and drag back in history, say to here where we have our detail. Let's go one more back. We can control tap our history slider go all the way back forward, go to project, hit project history. We're going to bring the poly painting with us. Give it a second to think. And now we have a fairly detailed model with good topology. Now you can see that it brought some nastiness with it. So we could actually either just smooth that or just go in and clean it up ourselves. Because keep in mind, you really shouldn't be at a complete finalization stage in Dynamesh, once we're kind of ready to really fine tune our creases and our surfaces and that sort of thing, you're switching the Z Remesher. So 
you know, no big deal. We can project that detail over and we're ready to go to continue detailing and really finalize the model. And with this head, all of the techniques that I showed you, I used. So I dynameshed the ears, the neck, and I used Dynamesh to block out the proportions and the surfaces. And then when I was ready to get closer to finalization, I Z remeshed it and then started sculpting. All right, guys, I think that wraps it up for this one. Not a crazy subject, but I know for beginners, it's very daunting to figure out what Dynamesh and Z-Remesher does um, because you see them and you hear about them all the time. And I hope this kind of cleared up a little bit about when to use each one and how to use each one. And of course, how to use them together to really speed up and really unlock more power in ZBrush for your sculpting. So hope that helps. If you have subjects or topics you would like me to go over, please leave a comment in the comment section below. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing. It really helps me. Thanks so much. We're almost hitting a thousand subscribers, which is pretty cool. You know, I know it's a small milestone on YouTube, but hey, it's growth and I'm pretty excited about it. So hell yeah, don't stop creating. I'll see you next time and take care.